A warning from a French emperor uttered some, what, 200 years ago? Sorry, wasn't around then. It kind of rang hollow for a long time, but China has awakened since. And if you think all she's done is shaken the world, you might be wrong. She may have well taken over the world. Martin Jacques, author of When China Rules the World, says we are underestimating China's potential power. PRC will replace the USA as the world's dominant power. And this globalization is far from making China more Western, despite all the Western suits and couture and accessories you see. It's actually got the flip side effect of making the world more Chinese. Martin Jacques, author of When China Rules the World, is here with me on the show today. This is the second edition of the book. First one is uh, just a three years young, mm. and yet you've updated it with a plethora of uh, newfound intel. But you're sticking to your guns. China's really defining the cultural, the economic, the political fabric of the world. You're not budging from that view. Well, actually, why should I budge from the basic propositions in the first uh, edition? Because over the last three years, things have moved actually spectacularly and un relatively unpredictably mm -hmm. more and more in China's direction. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, just take the question of when is the Chinese economy going to overtake the American economy? Mm -hmm. You know, the old Goldman Sachs projections in 2007 said 2027. Now the projections are something like 2018. Yeah, but in this case, we're talking about sheer magnitude and sheer size, sheer population, and the sheer involvement of the central government in the economy. I and mean, we're not talking about some nirvana or some, some pipe dream here, because there are cracks, there are fissures in the system. We've seen that with the slowdown. We've seen that with the, I don't want to use the word collapse, but the complete you know, ratcheting back in exports, imports, factory uh, activity. Well, who knows where the property uh, industry is going in China? more question marks loom over the PRC than last time we talked. Well, sure, you know, they've got problems. I mean, I don't think it's so new to say, well, they've got this wrong and th there's this problem and this difficulty and how they're going to surmount that question because these have been continuing questions for mm. China because actually, far from uh, the transformation pre being preordained, it's something that has required a great deal of skill on the part of the government, and I think that will continue. Maybe it'll become a more demanding situation, mm -hmm. but I don't really think that it's likely that China's growth is going to kind of peel away mm. and we're going to go down to something quite different. Mm -hmm. It is going to go down. It needs to go down, actually, but you know, what do they envision in the latest, tw the latest 12 five-year plan? Mm -hmm. About 7%. Right. But 7 or 8% would be a very good growth rate for China. Tell me, uh, between the, uh, you know, the last edition, which we talked about, and the second uh, edition, the updated uh, version, I mean, boiled down, you know, for TV purposes and a quick TV chat, which we're having here. What were the what are the main revelations? I mean, what were what were the surprises or the uh, I guess the epiphanies, if you will, that you discovered that may, maybe even surprised you? Well, I I think the first thing is what I've already mentioned, which is the impact of 2008, the financial crisis on the West, mm -hmm. while China, relatively speaking, handled the effects of that crisis extremely well and carried on growing very well with its stimulus plan. Of course, it threw up problems and so on, but that was the first thing. Secondly, linked to that was a major shift in power, largely unobserved, mm -hmm. certainly little commented upon, from the United States to China as a consequence of that. Mm -hmm. And then I think the third thing is we can already perceive what I would describe as uh, the beginnings of a Chinese economic world order. Mm -hmm. That actually China, rather than the United States, is probably now the key shaper of globalization. Mm -hmm. What are the characteristics of the Chinese economic world order? Well, it, they are going to be one, its enormous trade footprint on the world, mm -hmm. so that many, many countries now around the world, and this is a relatively recent phenomenon, phenomenon now count China as their chief trading partner. Right. Secondly, it's huge financial reserves. You mm -hmm. know, China Development Bank and China Exim Bank between them lent more in 2009 than 10 to sure. the developing world than the World Bank. Okay. Thirdly, the renminbi, you know, this is a new development since mm -hmm. the end of 2008, beginning to be used in the settlement of trade. Mm -hmm. HSBC projects whether it could come true or not, another mm -hmm. matter, but that uh, the renminbi will be mm -hmm. used for the payment of half Chinese trade with mm -hmm. the developing world. Right. I mean, that, those are very substantial shifts no, sure, in sure. a very short space of time. I agree. And, I'm, and, and, and to be fair, I mean, you're not saying that this is all positive change emanating from China because the, uh, the political rhetoric, rhetoric is rising. China in many ways is ostracizing itself, becoming, I don't, I mean, pariah is too strong a word, a word but you know, the, a, the, the, there's a lot of opposition aligning amongst themselves and lining up against China when it comes to things like 
uh, you know, uh, 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 when it comes to uh, claims to, uh, you know, ter uh, uh, territorial claims in the South China Sea, what China claims the most of, and then you have the U.S. pivot uh, towards Asia because of the rise of the might of China. So you're not, you don't postulate at all, and you didn't in the first edition, that all the change emanating from China is positive. No, I mean, what, look, you can't get the rise of China, 1.3 billion people, mm -hmm. you know, 10 was growing 10 percent a year for a long time growing 10 percent a year now a bit less dramatic transformation not only of the country but then suddenly since 2000 the turn of the century the transformation of the world that's what's been happening now mm. that is everyone's trying every government every leader even in china is trying to cope with the speed of that change and mm. is reacting to it mm. and working out how to respond to it and of course some responses are very negative some are very worried it may it may become more like that i i don't know it, there are perfectly reasonable grounds for saying that might well be the case. But, um, uh, and China's going to have to work its mm -hmm. way through all that. Now, you sure. know, so in some areas mm -hmm. it's been very effective. Right. Its diplomacy has been very effective. In yeah. others, I think it's not been so good, okay. like the Ch South China Sea. All right. Good job on the uh, update, okay? I'm surprised. It, I'm, I'm glad and happy for you that it sold so well. Mark, good, good to see you. Thank you very much. Martin Thank you, Johnny. And you don't look a day older.